Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. Thank you. That was a wonderful talk. So I will be following up with a talk about imaging of advanced prostate cancer, which really um, is great to follow the biochemical recurrence talk. Uh, here are our learning objectives. Understand the role, indication, and techniques for imaging in patients with known or suspected metastatic prostate cancer. Characterize and compare current molecular imaging modalities, which has really changed over the last few years. And then discuss next generation PET imaging in the assessment of men with biochemical recurrence after failed local therapy. So this will be a guidelines approach to imaging, specifically looking at these four disease states, biochemical recurrence, metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, non-metastatic or M0 CRPC, and then metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. The principles of imaging at recurrence, well, we're looking for the presence of metastatic disease, particularly in patients who are at risk due to overall PSA or PSA kinetics, such as what was mentioned before, a PSA doubling time less than 12 months. In this instance, we'll attain periodic imaging and the guidelines to date recommend cross-sectional imaging such as CT scan and a bone scan. When we think about this, this is conventional imaging, uh, a bone scan, it's a time-consuming test, but fairly well um, accessible. It it's available at pretty much anywhere. It's affordable as well. CT scan, it has the exposure from radiation therapy, but also available and affordable. When we think about CT scan, the strength, it can show in large lymph nodes. It also shows metastasis to solid viscera and the lungs. Its weakness, bone metastasis can be difficult to detect. And even when it does detect nodal metastasis, the sensitivity less than 40%, specificity about 80%. As far as a bone scan, the strength is it's highly sensitive for, for osteogenic activity and is a quick assessment of the entire skeleton, but it has low specificity and only moderate sensitivity, especially for patients at low PSA. Uh, the guidelines have recommended that patients who have negative conventional imaging may consider novel PET CT scans such as fluciclovine, choline, or PSMA PET. Now, this is changing uh, as we speak. So this is practice in changing. Observation or clinical trial is probably not going to be the next step. The uh, next generation imaging is what most people are going to get. And in fact, guidelines have been updated. So while the AUA guidelines are still awaiting update. The NCCN guidelines currently state that FDA approved agents such as F18 or gallium 68 PSMA PET are options that can be considered not only in patients with biochemical recurrence. The NCCN guidelines are opening this up as an opportunity for advanced imaging in initial staging at the time of biochemical recurrence and also at the time of disease uh, progression. The NCCN guidelines also mention choline PET and fluciclovine as uh, imaging options for detecting small volume recurrences. However, PSMA PET has high sensitivity, even at very low PSA, and so it's the preferred imaging option. The NCCN guidelines, do, do, or the NCCN panel, does not feel that conventional imaging is a necessary prerequisite to PSMA PET. So this is a break in what we've seen before, that PSMA PET can be considered equally or even more effective uh, as frontline imaging as compared to conventional imaging. For patients who are metastatic hormone sensitive, patients that undergo an initial assessment of disease burden using conventional imaging. And one of the reasons why you would consider that even in the advent uh, and age of, of next generation imaging is because to date, every, our treatment has been predicated on the results of conventional imaging. Conventional imaging can help us determine if patients have high or low volume disease, high volume being defined as four bone metastasis with at least one outside the spine or pelvis and or visceral metastasis. So during treatment, patients may also receive periodic conventional imaging because this helps us determine disease progression. For patients with M0 CRPC, conventional imaging can be done every six to 12 months. And that interval can be based on the PSA doubling time or the presence of symptoms. 
once started on androgen receptor targeted therapy, annual imaging is probably sufficient. And when we think of imaging in the CRPC state, we look back to the prostate cancer working group uh, as a way to um, categorize when patients would need imaging. So that working group was designed to uh, create the boundaries that we would use for clinical trials and for determining imaging in each disease state. For uh, CRPC, chest, abdomen, and pelvis at baseline for all patients is recommended, as well as a bone scan. For patients who may have neurologic symptoms or concern that they may have uh, skull or spinal metastasis, MRI or CT of the brain can, can be obtained. And also for patients with small cell or neuroendocrine tumors. The working group recommended re-imaging every three to 12 months based on PSA and symptoms. Uh, if the patient has worsening on the bone scan after starting new therapy, that could be flared. So you'll want to get a subsequent uh, repeat scan as well to make sure that what you're seeing on that initial uh, post-treatment imaging is not just flare. Now with next generation imaging, uh, in addition to the prostate cancer working group three, we have the radar three guidelines, uh, which are the uh, imaging guidelines that that include next generation imaging. And they uh, they also have recommendations not only for the uh, CRPC patients, but also for newly diagnosed biochemical recurrent and M0 CRPC. So this is a way that we can contextualize uh, when we would use next generation imaging. When we think of PET imaging and prostate cancer, we are not talking about FDG PET or the everyday PET. And that's because it has limited utility, particularly at a, um, when patients have a low PSA because there's relatively low glucose metabolism in, in advanced prostate cancer. It does, it does perform a little bit better in the CRPC state, but nonetheless, we would move on and not use FDG PET. So when looking for prostate cancer metastasis and considering PET imaging, there are several different imaging options available. Uh, some of them are not widely available, but historically have been available. So sodium fluoride PET, which is predominantly for bone metastasis, was used historically, no longer used. It was not approved. Choline PET, difficult to obtain, and we'll talk about that, uh, and it is being used less as well. Uh, F18 fluorocholine, which is also like choline PET, the synthetic amino acid PET radionucleotides, and then PSMA targeted PET imaging. And then finally, we have whole body MRI. So all of these imaging options will run through uh, quickly. When we think of PET imaging, we're, what we're looking at is uh, an, a molecule that is a positron emitting tracer like choline, uh, F18, or gallium, and linked to another molecule that is prostate cancer added. So that would be acetate, choline, flociclidine, or PSMA analog and then bringing those two components together and imaging within a CT scanner or in some places an MRI. When you look at the radio tracers, each radio tracer has a different characteristic. So choline uh, is not excreted in the urinary tract, but has a very short half-life, so it needs to be produced in a cyclotron and must be imaged near that cyclotron. F18 does have urinary excretion, but also has a long half-life, so it's much easier to use and gallium, also a longer half-life. Here's the uh, radar three guidelines, and we'll specifically be highlighting three of the most common imaging options available. That would be Aximan or flociclidine PET, uh, gallium 68 PSMA PET, which is also called Locomets, and then uh, uh, Polarify, which is the F18 PSMA PET. As I had mentioned earlier, sodium fluoride had historically been a PET uh, imaging option that was a, a designed to pick up bone metastasis. However, it's no longer available uh, because it wasn't approved. <clears throat> and this is just an, an example of what it looked like if you were to ever come across it, but conventional imaging on the left and a, a sodium fluoride PET on the right, the, the, the bone lesions uh, light up very brightly. Um, but again, not, not a PET imaging option that we would use today. So the cell membrane-based radio tracers, that includes choline and fluorocholine. Uh, this is really 
uh, highlighting that uh, cancer cells have increased cellular membrane synthesis. So that's where this radio tracer picks up its uh, affinity for prostate cancer cells. Um, and so when we think about it, choline and acetate have uh, low urinary excretion. So that would be advantageous for picking up recurrences, but a very short half-life. So you need to be on site with a cyclotron. Fluorocholine has the advantage of a longer half-life. So you don't have to be right near uh, a cyclotron. And then see uh, here we have imaging from choline PET. Uh, this is basically one of the early studies where 358 patients underwent uh, choline PET at the time of biochemical re recurrence following radical prostatectomy. And you can see that uh, these patients had localized recurrences detected at very low PSA. The median PSA in this study was 1.27. And you can see in the graph where around one to, one to two uh, where is where the detection falls below 50%. So choline PET had that ability to pick up, pick up recurrences uh, from a PSA about 1.5 or above. <clears throat> this did afford the uh, patients the opportunity to consider salvage surgery, particularly if they had uh, isolated lymph node metastasis that was uh, picked up on choline PET at the time of recurrence. Uh, however, when we looked at patients who underwent salvage surgery, many patients ultimately went on to have additional recurrences. So um, whereas uh, PSMA PET uh, and choline PET may be used at the time of recurrence. Uh, salvage surgery is, is really limited in its utilization to prevent further recurrences. Now we'll move on to Aximin PET. Uh, Flucyclovine PET was a, is a synthetic amino acid. Uh, it's a marker of protein synthesis that is increased, increasingly taken up by prostate cancer cells due to their increased metabolism. And so this PET tracer uh, can specifically be used at the time of PSA recurrence following prostate cancer treatment. Ideally, it has minimal urinary excretion. So uh, that's a, one of the advantages of flucyclovine is, is that you don't get that uptake in the bladder at the same time that you're imaging and uh, helps, I, helps isolate recurrences. So flucyclovine was FDA approved in 2016 specifically for that indication of P uh, prostate cancer recurrence following initial prostate cancer treatment based off of PSA increase. Um, it, it could isolate very small tumors and recurrences. Overall, the detection rate was about 68%, most of those in the prostatic bed or the lymph nodes, but some of them also in bone and other metastatic sites. This is just an example of a flucyclovine PET scan, you can see that very uh, bright, uh, avid uh, lymph node in the pelvis as compared to prostaskin, which was an older uh, PSMA targeted uh, scintigraphy imaging that uh, also is not available any longer. So flucyclovine definitely worked better than prostaskin. <clears throat> when you compare it to choline PET, uh, flucyclovine had better specificity. So this is a study of 89 patients with biochemical recurrence after prostatectomy. The sensitivity and negative predictive value between flucyclovine and choline were very similar, but the specificity for flucyclovine was higher. Positive predictive value was higher. That coupled with the ease of, of transport and imaging with flucyclovine, flucyclovine became uh, preferred over choline PET. Now, as we move away from the amino acid analogs to the PSMA targeted uh, imaging tracers, PSMA, a transmembrane glycoprotein overexpressed in prostate cancer cells. Again, this, this is different than prostaskin, which was also targeted to PSMA, but was targeted to an intracellular domain and used scintigraphy instead of, uh, P, uh, instead of PET imaging. So PSMA overexpressed early biochemical recurrence high stage tumors, high Gleason grade, uh, the uh, PSMA has very, uh, or has several ideal characteristics. <clears throat> Here's some examples, uh, comparison, comparing PSMA PET to prostaskin. So above you see the prostaskin scan, which again is a scintigraphy uh, <clears throat> using a radio pharmaceutical. And then below is the PSMA uh, uh, PET scan. 
and you can tell that the uh, the affinity and the avidity was higher with the PSMA pet. <clears throat> so again, uh, uh, prostate skin did not get picked up, but PSMA pet is the um, uh, current imaging modality that is really uh, taking over. So here's a comparison of PSMA PET versus choline. And here in this patient, you can see that there's a much higher signal in the, in the prostate area uh, with the PSMA PET than with choline imaging. And this study just showed that PSMA PET is able to detect recurrences at a much lower PSA threshold. So whereas uh, the choline PET worked at about one point, a uh, PSA about 1.5 or above, PSMA PET has 50% uh, 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 rate of detection, even as low as a PSA uh, 0.5. So uh, PSMA PET works uh, even better than choline. And again, here's just uh, a graphical representation showing that PSMA PET has a lower threshold for detection, getting down to that 0.5 range. Here's just an example of uh, PSMA PET image uh, that was uh, performed early on. And so following several studies with PSMA PET, both with gallium PSMA PET and F18 PSMA PET, both of them subsequently were approved. The gallium PSMA PET was initially approved only at two sites in California, then with subsequent expansion in its uh, indication, it's now approved uh, uh, without uh, location-specific approval. And then PSMA PET or F18 PSMA PET was approved later in May of 2021 and has become widely available. Coupled with that approval of PSMA PET has been the approval of a new treatment for prostate cancer, lutetium-177, a beta particle radio ligand targeting PSMA expressing cells. The VISION trial was a phase three trial of lutetium plus standard of care versus standard of care. And this used uh, PSMA PET as a way to identify patients with PSMA avid lesions. Um, each patient had to have previously undergone an AR targeted pathway inhibitor plus one or two taxane regimens. Lutetium was added, as stand, added to standard of care and improved both progression free and overall survival compared to standard of care alone. This led to the corresponding approval of PSMA PET coupled with that specific radio tracer, uh, which was the gallium PSMA PET. However, the NCCN guidelines in May of this year uh, came out with a statement based off of panel recommendation that either F18 or gallium PSMA PET either should be able to uh, detect PSMA avid lesions that would make a patient a candidate for lutetium. So whereas there was initial concerns that radio tracers coupled with the lutetium approval may not be widely available, the NCCN at least has offered guidance that either tracer can be used uh, to identify candidates for lutetium. And then we'll finally wrap up with whole body MRI, uh, which is an imaging modality that is not necessarily widely available because of challenges with imaging and also uh, with, with payer reimbursement, but can evaluate both the bone, viscera, and nodes all at one time with no radiation, uh, has better sensitivity than technetium, and approaches that of CT scan as well. The challenge is, again, availability. It's technically challenging. There's the lack of, of standardization, and there's difficulties with reimbursement. But it does offer a, a one imaging option that covers both bone, viscera, and lymph nodal metastasis. So in conclusion, CT scan and technetium bone scans are the standard imaging modalities. They remain widely used and can be helpful to negotiate both disease states and also disease progression. Um, however, new PET modalities are more sensitive for prostate cancer. Uh, they can uh, better define patients who may be CRPC or who may have uh, different metastatic burden. The FDA did approve them and uh, they are becoming more and more widely available. Currently, F18 flociclabine is widely available as well. Um, however, I think that there's been a uh, tremendous shift to the PSMA-based targeted agents. So clinical trials will be necessary to, to assess the impact of these new imaging options 
for defining our disease states and determining how treatments will impact outcomes. For now, uh, we continue to expand the use of these advanced imaging, particularly PSMA PET. So that concludes my talk, and uh, it's my pleasure to hand the the talk hand this talk over to Dr. Michael Cookson, who will be talking about M0 CRPC. Thank you.